Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Christopher Nolan's Tenet is one film that somehow will release in theaters in coming months. Nolan has saved us from months of limited movie news with a new trailer to break down. And even though it seems like an indecipherable 4D puzzle what the f*** fest, based on some easy to overlook clues, I think I might have figured out what Tenet is all about. So let's break this down frame by frame and spoiler warning in case I reveal too much. Let's get started. Okay, we start with some footage that we saw in the previous trailer, a shit moving in reverse through these wind turbines. But notice that the close-up of Martin Donovan's character shows a wake that appears to move outward in normal forward time. It's hard to tell because all he says in the shot is the word tenet, which is a palindrome both textually and phonetically. For all we know, this trailer could have reversed the shot and kept the audio the same, making this whole trailer breakdown process Real fun! As I explained in our breakdown of the first trailer, Tenet's palindrome aspect reflects how this whole movie uses localized time manipulation, moving forward and backward. All of Christopher Nolan's films play with time to some degree, time dilation in dreams, time's relationship with gravity. But here, it's all about inverting the flow of time localized within a system. Certain characters can reverse time on certain objects to gain an advantage in combat or espionage scenarios. John David Washington stares at this grunt on the left who, out of nowhere, winces in pain and doubles over, as if he was attacked by Washington seconds in the future, striking him as he reversed to this pre-fight moment. So you beat up one guy in forward time while you're beating up his friend in reverse time. More on this as we move on. Outside, Elizabeth Debicki's character departs in a car. In the background passes a black London taxi, placing this in London. Her bodyguard, who escorts her out of the kitchen to the car, was also the grunt on the right in the kitchen who fought Washington. And outside, beside Washington, there's a guy on the ground as he watches a car leave. So what's really going on here? Well, I think Washington is trying to intercept Becky's character, trying to catch her at her departure point from the restaurant. And he fights the guards around her, the guy from outside, back to inside the kitchen. And before I move on, yes, the music throughout this is incredible. It's composed by Ludwig Göransson, who won an Oscar for Black Panther and composed the amazing Mandalorian score. This guy is on fire. Let's move on. The new shot to point out is Washington with Clements Poesy's technician character. She opens this drawer containing odds and ends. There's lens pieces, rings, hardware. They're all small and able to be held like Nolan's Inception. Now, both of them are wearing these green gloves and one of these pieces floats up to his gloved hand, which is interesting because this isn't reverse time. If you play it in reverse, the object doesn't drop from gravity and like wobble when it lands. Hands, it just kind of back in place. So it seems like gravity itself is being inverted. And right before he summons it up, Washington seems to be pumping something in his hand. Maybe this is something that primes his hand to invert the physics like this, but he needs to wear gloves because if it touches its skin, it can be dangerous. Let's move on. Michael Caine comes back as he does in all Nolan films. He brings up a certain Russian national. Cut to Kenneth Branagh's character, supposedly the antagonist of this film. A close-up in the last trailer showed him holding Debecky's hand, so I'm guessing she could be his wife or his lover? Maybe his ex? One of those things? Washington's voiceover says he can communicate with the future. And assuming we're still talking about Branagh here, it seems as if this guy is a rogue figure exploiting this technology to manipulate past events. And that makes him obviously dangerous and must be stopped by more altruistic time manipulator agents. Now, this mysterious concrete chamber shows up again and again. Aaron Taylor Johnson's gonna be in this movie, and he shows up here as this soldier in the beret. He faces some threat coming out of this circular door. This room is bathed in red light, though notice on the reflection of the floor coming from the other side of the glass suggests that that side is lit in blue. Keep this, keep this color coding in mind as we look at a clue that shows up in the next section that explains what all this is. Now, Robert Pattinson seems to be playing the newcomer partner to Washington. And they clarify that this is not a tropey time travel movie, but rather one about what they call inversion. And again, there seems to be some tricky editing here. Washington is leaning forward when Pattinson asks about time travel, but when we cut to Washington's angle, he's sitting back in his chair when he starts to lean forward to correct him. So again, we just can't really trust any of the sequencing here. The technician and Washington, they're both still wearing the gloves as they demo reverse firing a bullet, catching a bullet. They open the chamber to catch the casing. He re-aims the gun. He catches the bullet from the target it, bullet goes back in the shell, which is now back in the magazine. But the most important detail of the trailer is this dry erase board. Its equations aren't just random set decoration. That equation is actually part one of the Maxwell equation with a diagram of what's called Maxwell's demon. B -b -b what? 
Okay, these relate to the second law of thermodynamics and a physics concept that's called entropy. Entropy is, well, in the loosest sense, the measure of general disorder in the universe, the infinity for particles to chaotically drift apart from each other. But in physics, more specifically, it's the amount of unavailable thermal energy in a closed system that can be converted to mechanical work. So if you remember from your high school physics, the second law of thermodynamics states that the total entropy can never decrease. Entropy is a constant in our universe. It always increases toward a thermodynamic equilibrium. So is E. Maxwell's equation that kind of sums this all up. DU equals TDS minus PDV means that internal energy, U, changes based on entropy, S, and volume, V. But beneath this gives us a visual depiction. Shows Maxwell's thought experiment of two closed systems, one with red particles and one with blue particles, and a little demon underneath who can magically violate the second law of thermodynamics and entropy to open a door between these systems systems, which allows the red and the blue particles to mix. If this were possible, theoretically, natural constants like the natural disorder of the universe or time would no longer be fixed on perpetually increasing axes, but reversible. This whole chamber in the movie is Maxwell's demon thought experiment. One side red, the other side blue. They're a bridge between parallel realities in which time is moving in opposite directions. The circular portal in the middle is the demon door that allows travelers from one side to interfere with the other system, reverse the motion of the bodies, maybe cross over weapons or vehicles that move in this reverse vector. This demon door appears to be heavily guarded, which makes sense. You don't want people crossing over. But if someone knows what they're doing, like Branagh's character, they could break through and wreak havoc on the causality of the other side's history. Maybe this is why they have to wear oxygen masks when they cross over. They need the air they breathe to be from their home system, since particles behave differently on the other side. They need to be able to regulate the air intake so that it doesn't screw up the flow of oxygen into their own bloodstream. Look, <laughs> I know this is confusing, but I'm sure Nolan's script will explain it all more clearly than I am currently doing. But in shouted exposition over and over again throughout all the action! Yeah, you know, some of these details are tough to spot, blend in seamlessly with the background, kind of like a, what the heck is this? A sleek front pocket wallet like the Ridge. Thanks to the Ridge for sponsoring this video. The Ridge wallet is light and sleek and industrial. It's designed to fit in your front pocket, unlike those bulky 90s style back pocket wallets that give you a big ass. This one is their titanium black design. It's smooth, it's minimalist, blends in seamlessly, and uh, that titanium? And hey folks, when you go out for essentials these days, just take the minimal essentials with you to make for quick, hassle-free transactions, right? The Ridge Wallet comes in over 30 styles and colors, including carbon fiber and burnt to titanium. It holds up to 12 cards and still has room for cash, assuming you still use those dusty old greenbacks. Every Ridge Wallet comes with a lifetime guarantee and they'll let you test drive it for 45 days and send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. It's got 30,000 five-star reviews, so they're doing something right. They also have great backpacks and travel bags with RFID blocking pockets and optional device charging batteries. Father's Day's coming up in June and the Ridge Wallet would make a great gift for Pops. Ridge Wallets are chainsaw proof, so when Dad trips in the garage, he doesn't have to worry about a touch-up on that vasectomy. Oh boy! Get 10% off today with free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com slash newrockstars. That's ridge.com slash newrockstars, and use the code newrockstars. Find the link in the video's description. All right, here, the painting behind Pattinson has a similar artistic style as the works of Francis Bacon, a painter that Christopher Nolan is obsessed with. He actually pulled out a big book of Bacon when talking about Heath Ledger's face paint design in The Dark Knight. Bacon's work expresses an existentialist bleak outlook of figures destabilizing into their raw components a very entropy-influenced idea, or, you know, maybe it's just hotel wall art. I wrote your comment for you. Washington drives a boat out to this big yacht. Earlier, we saw him in a different vessel with no overhang. There's just a lot of different boats in this movie. Makes me wonder if maybe that could be part of the time-resetting structure and theme, like going from being adrift in the chaotic sea back to the order of land on a mission. One theory that I saw is that maybe Debicki's character might have drowned during a voyage with her husband and his obsession might be trying to reverse entropy and time to get her back and save his family. But I'm also seeing evidence of another theory. Okay, we circle around Washington and Pattinson and Himesh Patel. Nolan actually used similar camera work on the three heads of Gotham in The Dark Knight, Dent, Gordon, Batman, as they plotted to save the city. There's more footage of this crazy Estonian car chase sequence. Washington is flipped over in a wrecked car, Branagh creeps up with a gun behind him, Crossfire shatters the car window, but it's in reverse, suggesting that Pattinson could be catching bullets past him as he's moving in reverse motion. Branagh's voiceover says, 
this is where our worlds collide. Suggesting he is from a different world, a different system, where things are moving in reverse, in his view, allowing him to meddle here. Washington is in a train yard where one train moves forward, the other in reverse, again expressing this idea of parallel things moving in opposite directions. Moving on. Okay, back to the crazy chase footage. The silver car between the Audi SUV and the BMW flips. Now the BMW is speeding in reverse and Washington and Pattinson react. Pattinson turns around suggesting they are the ones in the Beamer reversing. Then the silver car flips back and a normal drive swerving back from that Audi SUV, which has a dent on its side, suggesting that moments earlier it deliberately bumped into that silver car, try to slam it into Washington and Pattinson. From their point of view, the car flips in the opposite flow of time than from the Audi's point of view. And they look over to see a Mercedes to their right, reversing just as they are with its back door opening up to try to intercept the Audi. I think they're on the same side. On to the next part. So now a version of Pattinson and a version of Washington are on different sides of this Maxwell system chamber. On Pattinson's side, you can see a red marker on the floor. On Washington's, a blue reflection. So clearly these are the red and blue chambers of that thought experiment. I also pointed out in the last trailer, fun detail here, in one angle, Pattinson's hair is messy. Immediately after, on the other side, it is neatly combed. So we may be looking at the midpoint of the movie's palindrome here. On Pattinson's side, he is on the other side of the fight, hair messed up, about to reverse to its comb state. Those bullet holes were caused by Washington's struggle with the soldier, which he's about to go through after that soldier comes through the demon door on the other side. And these bullet holes were the focus of the very first teaser that Nolan released in theaters. And they were surrounded by wisps of smoke and vapor that appeared to be moving in reverse. Perhaps these holes are a key to the plot. The holes would allow air particles from one side to interfere with the entropy of the other side. Washington and Pattinson's mission could be to patch those holes, both these here and other bigger scary Branagh size holes. And I love how as the bullet holes reverse back into the gun here, Jorensen's score includes a reverse sound effect. As Nolan did with the Edith Piaf song in Inception, it looks like he will once again rely on music and sound effects to convey the passage of time, setting a big sequence in this symphony hall. I'm assuming we will be toggling between forward music and reverse music to know which side of it we're on. The whole symphonic element is just very interesting to me, by the way. Nolan is shooting these sequences at European opera houses, and the word opera appears with tenet in the famous Latin Seder Square, which is a two-dimensional palindrome matrix that I think a lot of this could be based on. Check out my first breakdown for more on that. These masked gunmen are holding these hostages at the symphony in Ukraine. This sequence was actually for the movie's prologue showed at IMAX screenings in December. Washington and his team of extractors pose as real cops to extract an American who they say has been made. I guess the Ukrainians set up this whole terrorist attack as a blind to cover up this American's death. So Washington and the American exchange its cryptic code phrase, we live in a twilight world and there are no friends at dusk. They end up swapping clothes between this guy and one of their agents so that the guy they're trying to extract can just escape on his own. And all the chaos, Washington gets saved by a mystery man who reverses the bullets back through a real cop. And even though the terrorist event isn't really their mission, Washington saves a cat by throwing all the bombs in the opera box. And during this, all the hostages are passed out because the cops were pumping knockout gas through the vents, which is making some believe this could be based on the 2002 Moscow Dubrovka theater attack by armed Chechens. Very tragic, 170 people died. But this prologue ends with Washington's driver saying that they extracted the wrong guy, caught the switcheroo. And then I'm thinking this leads to the train yard sequence, that cyanide moment we've seen in other footage. That could be what leads to the tenant organization coming in reversing Washington's killing and recruiting him to their forces. And before we move on, we see it's the Audi SUV that's reversing with Washington trying to get DeBecky out of it before it crashes into the traffic ahead. Branagh counts down as he points a gun at her. So maybe opposed to trying to save his wife, it's also possible that she defected from him, told other authorities about his evil inversion plans. And now he's reversing back to try to kill her before she can tell others what he's up to. My head hurts. Washington asks the key question of this premise that if we can reverse the flow of time, if we're here right now, doesn't it mean that what we're worried about never happened? Well, I think the implication is that our very existence means that that entropy agents are constantly scrambling behind the scenes to evade all kinds of temporal disasters that were lucky to sidestep. But now Washington has to join these meticulous resetters to keep the universe from collapsing into chaos. He has to bear the burden of all that stress. Okay, I just gotta pause here to over obsess about this tenet title. Obviously it's a palindrome, but the letters disappear in an interesting way. It starts with the middle N popping out of existence, but the E's both slide back together, but the T's disappear a different way. Each of them themselves is symmetric, disappearing individually from the outside in. This might reflect the movie's structure. 
Maybe the movie starts in the middle, but with dual timelines. One in which Washington is the more experienced explaining the patents and how it works, but he recruits him because he knows he's his partner in the other timeline in the future. And then another timeline progresses backwards to his earlier time when he was less experienced. <sighs> On to, on to the last bit. Okay, Nolan appears to be topping his plane crash sequence from The Dark Knight Rises, but with a ground-paced plane crash somehow. So what is the real mission here? Well, there was a separate TV spot that came out that went a bit further into this, so I think the mission is to either break into this plane or the building it's crashing into. Washington and Pattinson are disguising as SWAT with a body in a body bag that might be Patel sneaking inverted in time past firefighters onto that plane before it crashes into the building. Maybe so that all three of them could get onto that plane and hijack it and fly it somewhere else. And finally, these end titles could not be clearer about this movie opening in theaters. The whole theatrical cinematic experience is very, very important to directors like Christopher Nolan. They're not into streaming. And while it's still a bit unclear about the exact release date, it looks like the studio is still hoping for a July release as planned. We will see. But comment down below with your theories. Also, spend the shutdown period by watching along the classic films and breaking them down with us on our official Discord server by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash newrockstars. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EAVoss. Follow New Rockstars and subscribe for breakdowns of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.